the story behind Glorified G was that my friend, my dear friend, John Anderson, the artist John Anderson was visiting and he lived in Indonesia and I used to love to fuck with his head when he'd show up, he'd arrive at the airport, you know, from his tropical island and I would pick him up, you know, in the 57 Chevy and we'd go straight up to 7,000 feet in 20 feet of snow mm -hmm. and I'd smoke a, a big joint with him and he was completely culture shocked and out of his element, like woozy. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> so I took great pride in, in messing with his head when he came back and, and he loved it too. But uh, on this one particular trip, um, we were going camping and you know, both of us weren't stupid. I mean, you know, there, there are animals that, you know, are not necessarily friendly um and so going camping on mount rainier you know it's like well on the way up you know we passed a, a gun shop and it was like probably best to have something even if it's just something to make noise so i bought a couple of just you know th kind of throw away 22 caliber rifles you know for each of us to have in our tent and um the band's manager Kelly Curtis, um, there was no other way to say it. He liked to stir the shit sometimes, you know, he's kind of a drama queen in some ways. Um, and I had told him that, you know, I was going camping and he was like, you know, well, blah, blah, blah. and I said, don't worry, you know, I, I got a couple of, a couple of guns to take up, you know, thinking that that would would be something that he would, you know, would, would let him know he didn't have to worry about me getting, you know, in trouble while I was camping or whatever. Mm -hmm. And next thing I know, I show up for rehearsal after that weekend and I walk in and there's an attitude already and I'm, whatever, you know, it happened a lot. There was a little cattiness that went down uh, in that band sometimes. Um, uh, mostly between, you know, um, Jeff and Eddie, uh, they're pretty judgy folks. And, um, someone said, Hey, I heard you bought a gun. And I was like, you know, and this is after like minutes of, of no one saying anything, just this weird tension. Mm -hmm. And it was presented like, Hey, I heard you bought a gun. Like, you know, like looking down on me or like I had done something wrong. And so my response was, nah, in fact, I got two. <laughs> <laughs> and and that started this whole conversation about about guns and i was like you know at one point i had said you know look i bought a couple of fucking 22s big deal they're just like glorified pellet guns i'm not going on a shooting spree it's not a you know not a political fucking you know it's not a, a hate crime coming it was you know glorified pellet guns is all i saw them as you know i'm from texas a 22 is something that a 10 year old kid gets on Christmas and goes plinking cans. You know what I mean? So, um, but then it turned into this bigger conversation about guns and, and, you know, Jeff had mentioned how, you know, he grew up, you know, his, one of his, the rules, his dad, you know, there's guns around everywhere. It's Montana. And one of the rules was you always keep it loaded. You know, that's the way to keep, you know, have a gun be the safest is to keep it loaded and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So it was essentially a conversation that we were all having about our opinions and experiences with guns, whether it was yeah. growing up or like Jeff, you know, how his, his life was and all these different things. And it wasn't necessarily negative at all. Um, and nobody said that they felt manly when armed. That was a, you know, a, a uh, thing that Eddie took from the, you know, when he was penning it into a lyric, but yeah, he was just kind of taking copious notes on the conversation. Um, right. <laughs> but, you know, back then there was like this, this strange, um, you know, it, it was like, there was a period where when things were blowing up, um, there was a lot of passive aggressiveness, you know, um, Eddie was a pretty passive aggressive guy, you know, um, and it, it led to a dynamic, I think, that helped the music in a strange way, but ultimately hurt the band, 